Landcare was was really the mainstay of um, during 2003, we had bushfires here and then it was immediately followed by what we thought was a drought year and ended up being, you know, seven or eight. But people were in crisis because they didn't know what to do um, because this is a very stable area as far as uh, water and feed goes. We, we haven't actually had that sort of a crisis before. This is the Hume Dam and in the last 25 years we've rarely seen it this fall. But when the rains came, the rains came big time and presented new challenges for land care groups. And we have to remember that the last 10 years we've had, where we haven't had high flows or, or flooding, it's more of an anomaly. What we had to expect in the past was more like this, where you have those sudden high flows and you lose bank and um, you have to come back and fix it all up. Landcare has actually pulled our community together here in the last uh, 24 years. It's held it together uh, rather strongly in about the last five or six years through drought. It's helped Landcare and Landcare has helped the community. It's been a two-way thing. It's been an enormous um, social thing to hang our hat on through really tough times. It gave us a focus of coming together. It's bringing people together as well as achieving so much. So. I think, yeah, the newsletter to me, and funnily enough, the dung beetles are the important things because it's a community thing as, as well as a great effect um, onto the, to the farms and land around. There's been a few outside volunteers come in, but most of it has been done by groups of people getting together on each other's places, always accompanied by the um, compulsory barbecue or sausage sizzle. And, and maybe a stubby or two thrown in. And there are people that if you don't have children at the local school um, or you don't play tennis in Wurundjeri, then um, there are, it gives an avenue for people to be involved in the community who aren't necessarily involved in those other activities. I think the social aspect draws in people who wouldn't otherwise be bothered turning a sod to plant a tree. And I think that social responsibility is what land care is is building on. A lot of them haven't necessarily had on-ground experience. Because you're relying on volunteers, you can't just say, well, we're starting this project on Monday because lots of people have got other things in their lives. So because it's a volunteer activity, you have to work in with volunteers as well. It's not just the people on their land. They may have improved the look of their land, but it's the um, overall community that benefits from all of the things that we've done. Like anything, whether it be a footy club, cricket club, basketball, whatever, you know, politics even. But I think, uh, yeah, it, is, it definitely is. has a bearing on what people think and say, and you learn a lot from each other. There's a lot more acceptance of a lot of the things that Landcare stands for that farmers just do now as a matter of course. Just a couple of days ago, I was, I was down chasing shorts in the electric fence and I thought, well, this is nice, you know, you, you just hear some birds in the background and, and um, the water is running there in the creek and it's a nicer place to work now. It is an absolute delight to drive around parts of Barrandoota where we, we've worked in over the last 10 years and see the results of those planting exercises. I think with volunteerism in particular, you do, you do need to see results, more so than in a paid job. So people need to see that they're um, their effort is resulting in something um, and so uh, the social side is important but I think every maybe even reviewing every now and then what you've what you've achieved this is what it was like and and I think it's really important to take photos and have them on display so people can say well yeah it was pretty horrible and we've worked lots but it's really good now so people seeing results is really important. They're volunteers and uh, and they're the salt of the earth, really. Uh, people who are keen on what they do, they do it because they love it and because they, uh, like me, like uh, dealing with people with similar mind. One of the highlights of this group is the, uh, we've continued to function very well. We've up to about 45, 50 members, and that hasn't changed the real lot. We've got a lot of members of the community here, so I think we've hosted some very big field days here. Uh, and the, the highlight in my mind is the community working together for, uh, for on local projects for its own benefit. As we said earlier, we've gone away from the individual approach. We work together very strongly. So to me, that is a highlight working under the, uh, the, uh, 
the banner of Landcare. When we planted our corridor, which was about the second last thing you want to do the very first minute you move in, but we've got a corridor that joins our bushland and our creek and our bush. Lots of hard work at the time, but now it's there and the trees are grown and we have, we've got um, gliders, um, sugar gliders and things, and they use that corridor. Um, we used to have gliders, we could stand on our veranda and see sugar gliders up here in the tree. And when we first came, the birds would come through and stay a couple of weeks and go, but now they live here and they nest here. We bought a, a property next door and it was, it had about 12 or 15 trees on the whole property, I think, and um, half of them got blown down in one windstorm and we've planted a few thousand there now and it's, it's transformed the look of the place. There's been lots of changes in farming practice that some aren't as visible I guess but um, certainly other things are. When you see something like a sugar glider in your garden or the birds that come it's incredibly rewarding. I think it's just improved the, the visual aspect of the you can see the farms that are involved and the farms that aren't over the 15, 16 years. I think Landcare has a very good future. I hope it can survive. Positive. I think it'll wax and wane with individual groups. I think it's going to be farmer driven. It's a bit iffy. I reckon there's a rosy prospect for Landcare generally. It's got a very important role. This job will ever be done. We won't have these small productive units because they're not going to be viable in the long term. But that's where I think the big potential of Landcare is, um, is to start uh, getting the ordinary householders. It'll do them good to, to get out and do a bit of digging instead of squatting. We're looking at such changing climate. There's a lot of pressure on the business side of, of agriculture these days. Uh, you've got to you know, look at your production, your costs. You've really got to you know, make sure your business is fairly fine-tuned. More industrial farms, maybe? As farms change ownership, you get different focuses or change management. You get a shift in focus and a lot of new work that's uh, seen to be needed. It's positive, even though it's sometimes very, very difficult to keep the momentum up. I had concerns in the last few years that Landcare was probably going to just fold up and, and disappear. Oh, it's dropped off. It's dropped off. It really has, it's, it, there's a struggle to, to, to uh, keep it motivated. Um, we try varying things, but um, I think the main thing we lack is, is youth. I think the average age of farmers now is in their 60s. The next generation is going to be the future. And, and the youth don't seem to have their, their um, attention devoted toward land care at this point. How is that change going to manifest itself? But I think it'll turn around. I think it'll go around again. I mean, I certainly continue to support it, that's for sure. I think it's going to be successful. It has to be people driven, you know. The, the, the landholders have to take charge. I think that it's an important thing and I really feel sad if we don't hold Landcare together. We've had an incredible um, network of people pulling things together and making all of this happen and then all of a sudden we've pulled the rug out from under it and I hope that we can get the rug back under it. And working together I believe that we can access better funding with more direction and uh, be a far better future for Landcare. The networks you know, have to be uh, much, much stronger in their uh, applications and uh, delivery of projects. It can be a bit daunting what has to be done. There's still plenty to do, you know, we, we've got a lot of trees here, but there's still new the areas for, for many, much more plantation work to be done. Because the environment obviously needs our, our input after our impact. It's motivating to look over your shoulder and see what has been achieved over uh, in the past and that gives you encouragement to, uh, to keep on going. So transitioning from small family farms to some bigger operations but with other enterprises coming in like tourism. With the tree focus a lot of people have been there, done that, They're, they've got their farm set up and they don't have a need for the group. Things always change over time and change is usually good. But I think we have to look at a few different aspects. We have to make land care all inclusive, we have to start uh, with the schools, we have to include all members of the community, not just the farming members. As long as the group's there in the background that, um, to service those needs, I think it's got a good future. There you go. Land care for the future. <laughs> it's, just, it's just magic. I can't define it any other way. Just, just magic to see the, the spirit grow and accomplishments happen as a result of the community. 
that's what land care does. Protects the land for all of us. Land care's all about caring about the land.